he slapped one of them, and she couldn't believe that he would raise his hands on a woman. But to Zhang, she wasn't a woman. She was just an ugly gorilla who liked to bully others. The other one got her hair pulled, and she screamed for Zhang to let go of her. He suddenly pulled out a knife and held it to her neck. Tears filled her eyes, and in a shaky tone, she asked him what he was about to do. He quickly swiped the blade across her neck and gave her a befitting end. Zhang had a devilish look in his eyes after what he had just done. Shanshan and the other bullies couldn't believe their eyes. They didn't think he could have done something so horrid. Anyway, just to let you guys know that he didn't actually kill her. Yeah, I got you with that one. The girl knelt on the ground and cried out because Zhang had cut her hair. Any more cuts, and she would have been looking like a bald freak. To her, it was the worst possible fate she could have imagined. She yelled out in a thundering rage at Zhang, cursing him out and saying that she wouldn't forgive him for daring to cut her hair. Zhang looked down at the fool as if he were her god and told her that long hair would only drag her down. She didn't understand his words, and she was too angry to comprehend anything at the time. He told her that she would understand in a few days, and that short hair might actually save her life. Just like that, he killed all hair-pulling fantasies she probably wanted to satisfy in her miserable life. With the girls dealt with, he called Shanshan and her grandfather and said that they were leaving. Shanshan was confused and asked where they were going. Moments later, they got into the car and left. In the car, Shanshan was shocked to hear that she wouldn't be going to school anymore. Her grandfather explained that there was going to be a huge famine soon, and because of that, there was no need for her to sit and listen to boring lectures anymore. They had to do their best to survive. While Shanshan was trying to understand Lai's crazy words, Zhang had a sly smirk on his face as he drove. He was most likely happy that he had secured someone he could feed his chocolate to, and he couldn't get the fantasies out of his head. On the other hand, Shanshan told Lai that he shouldn't be listening to scam calls because she thought the old man had completely lost his mind. Considering his age, she wouldn't be wrong. She argued with him and asked how much he got scammed for, and Lai tried to explain that he was telling the truth. While the two continued arguing, Zhang was just happy to have Shanshan and promised himself to protect her this time around. Then he butted into their conversation and told Shanshan that he was the one who informed her grandfather about the famine and it wasn't a scam. She was just surprised that the idiot could actually talk. Then she nervously asked who he was. Zhang introduced himself and told her that she could call him Brother Yang. Shanshan then thanked him for dealing with the bully, Sun Wai, and teaching her silly bunch of stupid lackeys a lesson. Zhang told her not to worry about the fools because they barely had many days left in their useless lives. Shanshan was confused and asked what he meant, and if there was really going to be a famine. Then Zhang told her that he used the concept of famine to explain the situation to Lai's deteriorating brain. Shanshan was glad to hear that because she was sure that there couldn't be a famine in such peaceful times. But he burst her bubble by saying that it was the apocalypse that was actually coming. Now, she was even more nervous as she exclaimed the word apocalypse in confusion. Zhang claimed that the time was right and told her to check her for short videos and the news. He said if nothing unexpected happens, she should start seeing signs of the situation. Shanshan quickly picked up her phone and came across the news of someone with rabies who was biting others like a mad dog. From her phone, you could see some officers trying to hold down the despicable zombie-like person as he struggled to break free. More news came up about a strange smog, and they highlighted that it had a strange smell. Kinda like Zhang, considering that the piece of garbage hasn't showered since the beginning of this book. More screams could be heard from Shanshan's phone as people complained about getting bit by others. Her face was struck with fear. She couldn't believe the horrific events that had started to take place and thought it must have been a dream. She was completely shocked to hear Zhang say that these were all expected events and that they were signs of the beginning of the apocalypse. This idiotic girl still stupidly asked if there was really an apocalypse. Even after seeing the signs on her phone, I guess stupidity runs in her family. The next day was going to be the first day of the apocalypse, and the toxic smog would cover several provinces, including Province B. The unknown toxic smog was going to affect all living creatures, and chaos would be slowly unleashed in the world. Slowly, a significant portion of humans would be turned into repulsive, brain-dead zombies, and everything would fall into ruin. People would try to run for their meager lives, but their efforts would be completely useless. 
Eventually, the zombies would catch up to them and turn them into a McDonald's Happy Meal, eventually turning the innocents into filthy zombies as well. Zhang said that Shanshan should obviously know what zombies were. She obviously did, but the whole story was still too unbelievable for her. Being popped out of school to being told about an apocalypse was the last thing she expected in her life. While they were stuck in a traffic jam, Zhang told her that she would believe everything in the coming weeks by then, she would cling on to his sausage like a desperate ex-girlfriend because he would be her only saving grace. Zhang was pissed about the traffic jam and noticed that even the emergency lane was stuck as well. Grandpa Lai was worried, so he asked Zhang what they would do if the zombies caught up to them in the traffic jam. But Zhang said that it wasn't that urgent yet. But he started to think about it and the possibility of a small outbreak occurring while they were trapped there. While he was thinking about it, some crackhead driver tried to cut in front of his car. Zhang blocked him but suddenly slammed the brakes, nearly sending the old man and Shanshan flying through the windshield. If you guys want the next part, then complete the aim of 100 likes and 100 subscribers. If you complete that, then I will upload the next part. Otherwise, I can't upload it. Zhang was angry that the reckless driver was trying to cut into the emergency lane without a turn signal. He wasn't going to let the idiot get away with such tomfoolery, so he started driving like Vin Diesel in the Fast and Furious movies. The car kept trying to cut into the lane, but Zhang wasn't about that life. The stupid driver pulled up beside him and started yelling and cursing him out, but Zhang ignored the foolish and great. Lai tried to advise Zhang to let it go because the idiot looked like a rich and powerful person, but Zhang was ready for the worst. If the driver eventually wanted to step out and cause trouble, he was ready to beat him to a pulp. The traffic was over, and the cars finally started moving after being stuck for almost an hour. Shanshan noticed the reckless driver from before was still trying to cut in front of them, and she told Zhang to watch out for the fool. At this point, Zhang was enraged, and he was ready to send the idiot to the deepest depths of hell. The two of them got into a crazy road rage, and Lai begged Zhang not to stoop to such a foolish level. With the apocalypse already approaching, Zhang wasn't bothered about traffic rules anymore. He said that there was no need to be lenient with a stupid, reckless driver. He eventually broke free, causing the driver to nearly crash by the side of the road. The ugly fool got out of his car, cursed him out, and called the police, telling them to find the plate number of Zhang's car. He was probably another spoiled rich brat who loved to spend daddy's money recklessly. He swore to get back at Zhang and teach him not to mess with certain people. At nighttime, Zhang got back to his new safe house. As they stepped out of the car, Grandpa Lai and Shanshan were amazed at how massive the place was. Shanshan even said the place was a bit too much. It definitely won't be when she and Zhang finally get down and dirty. Zhang told them to get some rest because the following days were going to be a whole lot tougher. The next morning, Zhang was standing in front of his huge window while sipping a hot cup of coffee. Shanshan stepped out of her room, yawning and stretching while stating that it had been so long, she slept so well. She finally didn't have to wake up like she was at a boot camp and get ready for morning classes. Zhang looked glad that she was able to rest well. I guess he couldn't satisfy his urges yet since her grandfather was still with them. He then asked to go with him so they could check out the fortress together. You'd think they'd finally have some alone time, but Lai the Great Fool just had to tag along. As they took a tour of the place, Zhang told them that the walls were made of reinforced concrete and the remote-controlled gate was also made of pure steel. The only way to break through was with heavy weapons, so neither zombies nor regular humans could easily get in. He reminded them that without his permission, no other person was allowed into the fortress except the three of them. Shanshan asked whether they were going to let survivors who made it to the fortress just die like a bunch of wastes. He ignored her question and told her to follow him like a lost puppy. He explained how people's true intentions would be unpredictable during the apocalypse. Being too kind would get them swindled, and humanity's dark side would fully show itself when the events begin to unfold. They walked to the back of the building and came to a place he called the Buffer Zone. They were shocked at how huge the place was. We could see some lined up crates and a small building that was to serve as a shelter. Zhang told them that if survivors came while he was away, the Buffer Zone could provide them with temporary shelter but they would not be allowed into the fortress until he returned. Next up, he said he would take them to the food storage, 
which was the most important thing in an apocalypse. If they weren't able to find food, Zhang and Shanshan might have to start eating themselves. Not in the way your dirty mind was thinking about. He said he'd show them the areas of food that would be distributed sparingly. As he led them into the food warehouse, he suddenly stopped to look back at them. He activated his mind's eye ability to make sure that Lai and Shanshan were truly on his side. The two of them looked confused because they didn't understand what he was doing. Jung saw two happy emojis at the top of their heads and figured it was a sign of trust. It was his first time seeing it, which meant that the old man and his granddaughter completely trusted him with their lives. Jung brought out a weapon crate from his ring and told them that weapons were the most important thing during an apocalypse. Isn't it supposed to be food? Anyway, he told them to make sure to keep it under their control and not let it fall into enemy hands. The two of them were shocked as they picked up a shotgun and a crossbow. It was as if they had slowly started realizing how serious things were. This is the end of the video. If you guys want to see the next part, then don't forget to subscribe and like the video.